Talking with the Experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson and today my guest is Nelson Jordan and Nelson is um, talking about copywriting and digital marketing. And Nelson is a conversion copywriter, digital marketer and host of the Working From Home podcast. With more than 10 years experience helping companies grow their revenue, he provides tips, tricks and strategies for success at his blog, nelsonjordan.com. Welcome, Nelson, and good morning or good evening for you. (laughs) Yeah, it's midnight over here in the UK, but thanks for having me on, Rose. Oh, thank you for joining me. Um, So you focus on conversion copywriting. Tell me what that is. So it's essentially getting people to take uh, an action. It's called conversion copywriting, but you may have heard it also called as uh, direct response copywriting. Um, So there are the two kind of buckets of copywriting. There's brand oriented copywriting and then direct response conversion copywriting. Conversion copywriting is kind of what I focus on because it's, it's kind of where the money is in terms of when people come to you that are um, small or medium business owners, they don't have as much money um, in their budget to spend on kind of long-term branding. What they really want to see when they come to me for copywriting services is we need sales now. (laughs) And that's kind of what direct response is all about. So it can be anything from website copywriting to lead magnets to email automation, um, but it's kind of the catch-all name there. Ah, sounds interesting. Maybe I might come and see you. Well, I'll email you. <laughs> and um, so, and tell me a little bit about your digital marketing part of your business. So I've got. Uh, just over a decade experience in digital marketing. I started out in social media, um, both organic and then paid, and then moved towards search engine optimization and pay-per-click, so PPC, and then finally moved to conversion rate optimization, which is CRO. So I've been collecting all these acronyms over over various years, all all very confusing. Um, But essentially it's, knowing what marketing channels need to work for you at different parts of your business, depending on what industry you're in, depending on your budget levels, depending on your objectives, whether that's objectives for the quarter or for the year. Um, I kind of piece them all together and I'm what you would call a full funnel copywriter. So I handle pieces of copy at all stages of the sales funnel and for all different marketing channels. Um, But you have copywriters that, you know, are focused on one thing as well. So you might come across an email copywriter or um, a Facebook ads copywriter um, or somebody that's called like a content writer, which is more kind of your blogs and your eBooks and things like that. Um, Where I really add value to my clients is understanding copies place really at different parts of the funnel. All right. So um, explain, um, I guess, give an example perhaps of how you would start um, this copywriting journey from, you know, from the very beginning until the very end. Sure. So it typically begins when a client approaches me for a a project that they've got in mind. Um, One of the kind of myths that I want to dispel right at the beginning is that copywriting is kind of mostly about writing. It's weird. It's not. It's mostly about research. Um, If you do research well, then that handles 60 to 70 to 80% of the actual copy that you end up writing. Um, So the the research stage for me involves kind of both external and internal research. So that can be anything from conducting surveys. Um, Most of my projects involve three to five interviews with existing customers of those clients and those take anywhere between 45 minutes an hour for each one, where we record the sessions, really dive in and say exactly what makes the customer tick, what are their pain points, what are they looking for in the products. One of the most important questions that I ask is what led you up to this point? Um, So what was going on in their lives? 
that really made made kind of this product or this service particularly applicable for them. Um, so we focus on those and then it's a question of pulling all of these research uh, pieces together, whether that's like competitor research, whether that's from the surveys, whether that's existing data that the company already has, existing research, talking to the customer service team, talking to the clients. Um, a lot of the times when you do copywriting well, what you're doing is almost taking the customer's words, rejigging them, reformatting them, and then placing them in a logical argument, and then almost just repeating those words back to them uh, for the other customers. Um, so actually, a lot of my process, I spend a day to two days actually doing all of that research, putting it together, letting it mull around in my head for a little while, uh, which is also the essential part. And, and then I do all of that before I actually get anything on paper. Um, from that process, then I put together a, a first draft, leave it again for a couple of days just to, just to step away from it, come back to it, make any final changes, and then send it over to the client. Um, if I do everything well, then there are very, very minor change, like minor amends, like there's... If you, do, if you do it well, if you go through all of this systematic process, you should never be in the position where you, you have to do a full rewrite or anything like that. Ah, well, it's a pretty um, intense process. Um, a lot of research goes into it. I mean, I know when I'm doing my, my own blogs and things, you know, I do a lot of research for those. And yeah, it does take some time to, to uh, you know, find the right write words and things so do you actually write the copy itself or do you just um do the research and and um as you say you, you hand over something to the client but it is actually the copy for a blog or for a um um email sure. or a website is so is that all what you do or yeah so so i handle the the writing really so if you're if you're doing the research and you're the one kind of conducting all of the customer interviews or whatever that might be then it makes sense for you to also be doing the writing um so yeah that that's that's the other part of my job is actually putting this um whatever that might be uh, most of my work tends to be uh, more about around like the the website side so I might um, have like a course creator or an entrepreneur or somebody in that sort of field come to me and say, Nelson, I need um, three sales pages for this service, this service, and this service. What do you think I should do? Um, and a lot of the time, my, because of my digital marketing experience, essentially what I'll do is go, actually, maybe you don't need this. Maybe you need this instead or yes that sounds good this is the the thing that i think would would work best as an implementation tool and um, so with me i don't just stop at the copywriting i also take more of a strategic view because i've been in in their shoes i've been a business owner um i've also worked with these days i think i'm on about between 70 and 80 clients across many different industries so I kind of know the best practice. I know what works and, and hopefully I'll be able to give them some guidance as well. All right. So how do you plug the holes in someone's, you know, um, marketing strategy? Firstly, like there's a ton of analysis that goes into there to even understand where those holes are, I think is actually more confusing than, than a lot of people think. A lot of times people say, I've got an issue here. Um, and when I do an audit, um, because I have a background in conversion rate optimization, when I do an audit, actually it, it turns out that this part was wrong where they thought this was. Um, but really it's about breaking the, the marketing funnel down into its constituent parts. So each different element on your website or each different element on um, your blog or email has to be pulling its weight. And if you know what you're doing and if you know which metrics you need to look for, then, you know, providing you've got a systematic process for this, you can unpick those. So, for example, um, when you have when you're looking at your blog and you're looking at organic traffic, people that find you through Google and other search engines are available, apparently. Um, 
people will come through. <laughs> not that they right. not that they use. <laughs> um, people will come through, and you can you can use um, uh, Google's Search Console to see okay how many people um, actually the number of impressions that that this page got. So that's the number of times your um, your blog posts or various pages appeared in Google, not necessarily were clicked on, but just appeared for certain keywords. Then you can look at the um, click-through rates for all of those. And you can systematically go through and say, that's got a good click-through rate, that's got a good click-through rate. Why, why is this click-through rate so much lower? And then you rewrite the parts that are responsible for the click-through rate, which is your title, your meta description, and your URL slug. And then you can go through that. Okay, you've done your, your blog, your organic um, kind of impressions and everything through Search Console. Then you look at things like um, time on page. Okay, are there some blog, blog articles that you're doing really well for here? Are there some pages that you're getting a lot of people to on your, your website, be it blog pages, be it service pages, about pages, whatever, that actually have a really high bounce rate or a really low conversion rate? Okay, why is that? And then you can go through using tools. Uh, I use Hotjar a lot to see how people are actually interacting with the website. And then you can see actually like the majority of people um, left here, okay? So they saw this page and they looked at this headline and that headline clearly wasn't doing a good job. Um, so let's write another headline and test that against that because so many people left and we saw through Hotjar. So it's really about breaking all those parts down. So tell me about bounce rates, you know, um, explain to, 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 the, to people what bounce rate is because it's um, something that's used a lot, but not really understood when you have a website. Um, so typically you've got two metrics um, that you need to be looking for and they often get confused. One is bounce rate and one is exit rate. Exit rate is just about, um, somebody leaving that page and that page was the last one that they interacted with before they left your website. And you can view all of these metrics in Google analytics. Um, the other one that you mentioned there is bounce rate. Now bounce rate is really about the number of interactions that people had on your website before they left in your kind of standard out of the box Google analytics setup. Mostly it's only going to be recording, um, on the page fire. So when you actually go to a new page, then kind of event is sent back to Google Analytics to register that. Um, so if you go to a page and you don't go to any other pages and then you close that page, that registers as a bounce. Um, the exceptions to that are when you've got other, um, other kind of interaction set up. So for example, you have a Google Analytics fire an event when somebody is 25% or 50% or 75% down the page, then if people scroll, then you wouldn't have a bounce rate um, for that particular uh, visit. Um, but bounce rates are useful to kind of understand where um, pe more people than average are leaving your site. That gives you kind of a good indication that there might be something wrong with that page in either a technical sense or um, it's not capturing visitors' attention, or you're not being as persuasive as you need to be in terms of the copy you're using or the formatting or something like that. Yeah, so a high bounce rate then is not very good for your website is pretty much the point. Um, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, a high, high bounce rate is, is an idea to kind of, that flags up that you might want to look there. Um, if you've got a page that accomplishes its goal, say for example, you're running a weather website and somebody goes on and they just want to check the weather, you'd expect to have a really, really high bounce rate for that. Oh, okay. um, because they've, they've done their objective. Somebody's gone on, they've used your website for that information and they've left again. Um, so you have these different cases where, for example, um, blogs have quite a high bounce rate compared to your other pages because a lot of people come via organic traffic. Um, they come on, they read your blog and maybe they're done with it, you know, and that's not necessarily a problem 
they've got what they wanted to accomplish and then left again. Okay. So you need to really find out where the page is that's not converting so much and the page that is converting, you know, they might, as you say, may have done what they've wanted to do and then, then left. Okay. So, right. So how do people then, I'm getting a bit into technical now, but how do they find out which page is bouncing, I guess, and which page isn't? Mm -hmm. So it's just about learning how to use Google analytics. Um, It's obviously free. It's, it's pretty easy to use. There are tons of training courses out there. Um, but really, you just have to go into Google Analytics and then dig down into the data. And you can do it in lots of different ways. But the, the easiest way for me is going into behavior. And I think it's like site content or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and then it will literally tell you all of these metrics um, for each individual page or for each section of your website, however you want to view it. And then you can just click the bounce rate and then it will order by highest to lowest. Ah, interesting. I didn't know that. There you go. I learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, okay. So tell me also about working from home podcasts. Yeah. So it's a, a new podcast. Actually, the, the first two episodes came out today. Um, oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a long day. Um, so I essentially interview uh, two different types of people for the podcast. Uh, the first part, uh, the first type of the audience, I suppose, is people like me. So that's freelancers, online business owners, remote workers, people with non-traditional jobs that, that work from home. Um, to kind of find out about their lives, why they work from home, what they enjoy about it, um, the the struggles as well. Like one of my uh, struggles and the reason that I started the podcast is that I live in the English countryside and it gets very, very lonely because I don't have an office to go to. I don't have colleagues to interact with. Um, So that's kind of my selfish reason for starting the podcast. Mm. Uh, The other kind of people that I have on are experts in a particular field that can help people like me in in whatever they're experts in. So that's, you know, uh, mindfulness and meditation, that's nutrition and exercise, that's productivity, um, that's work-life balance, that's managing remote teams. Um, So yeah, the the whole concept is to, to make life better for better and happier really for freelancers and online business owners wow and where can they find this podcast um so it's just on itunes spotify uh android whatever wherever you want to go for your for your podcast you can just search working from home with nelson jordan and it'll it'll appear ah well done excellent business yeah i just got um my podcast um, accepted on iTunes um, during uh, the week. So, yeah, I just need to get onto Spotify now and see how I go. Hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay. So, what else can you share with us about copywriting and digital marketing that's, um, you know, for someone, especially one that's starting out? Sure. So, if you're, if you're a business owner, let's say, and you've, you've got a website, Um, and you're unsure about what the copy is, the biggest mistake that people uh, make when they're talking about their business because they're so close to it is focusing on the features rather than the benefits. This is like the thing that I see absolutely all the time. So you talk about what you have to offer, whereas your customers don't care what you have to offer. They care what you can do for them. Mm. So they will say... um, Say, for example, this week I've been working on a a financial website and, you know, in the past they might have talked about, um, you know, their rigorous uh, audit program, for example. Super super dry stuff, quite boring, so I won't go into it too much, but they'll be talking about their audit process. Well, the customer doesn't care about the audit process. They care that they're going to save money or they're not going to face fines when the regulators come knocking and and things like that. So by switching, making that kind of just one mindset switch can turn your copy from from being like very ignorable to to very powerful very, very quickly. So 
that is kind of the number one. If you're going to take one thing away from this about copywriting, it's always benefits over features. Um, so the other thing to um, go through is a, a quick, you know, five minute tip that's really, really helpful is doing control F on your, uh, on your browser and then just putting in the words we. So anytime you're saying we on your website, it's a good indication that you're talking about yourself when you should be talking about what the customer's going through or, and you know, that's, that's the clue really that you're being kind of too inward internal looking rather than focusing on the customer as the hero, you know, um, in terms of digital marketing, I think that's probably too broad to, to, yeah. to kind of talk about, cause we could go on for absolute hours. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a big subject. Yeah. So, so, I mean, most, um, most coaches, whatever teach the you, we, I principle. So it's you first. So you is the client or customer and then we is what we can do together. And then you talk about what, you know, you can do what I can do for you. It's so, yeah, that's, I guess, do you agree with that principle or is that how you sort of think of it? Yeah. As long as the, the, the customer is always focused as kind of the hero, like a really good book um, for, for people that are kind of struggling with this concept or just want to get a little clearer is Story Brand by Donald Miller. Really, really good kind of way to look at things. And he always says you should always, always, always treat the, the customer as the hero of the story. Um, your role as the company, as the brand, as the facilitator is a guide. You know, you think of them as Skywalker and yourself as Yoda. Yeah. Um, you should never, ever, ever be the focus. You should always be the facilitator, the guide, the person that is enabling the customer to get whatever they want, you know, whatever their desire would be that you, you help to satisfy. That's great advice. All right. So, well, thank you so much, Nelson, for joining me today. Um, I really welcome. enjoyed our conversation and uh, perhaps we can chat again sometime. No problem at all. Thank you, Rose. All right. Thanks. Take care. You too.